Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So I was on this um, card making website on Facebook, card making page, and they kept doing what they called these pinwheels and they were gluing them to the front of their cards. And I asked one lady, I'm like, do these things spin? And they said no. And somebody put in the comments, you know, if you put a brad in it, it'll spin. And so for the past several days, I've been trying to figure this out to make these pinwheels to be a journaling card so that we can put it in our pocket, in our um, belly bands, in our journals, and it'll also spin. So it's also an interactive piece. So um, I finally figured it out <laughs> after many, many trial and errors, and I wanted to share it with you guys. So these are the different ones here that I've done. I'll show you these real quick. Oops. This was one of the first ones, which was a bit of a mess up. We have this one. And this one. And again, it's writing space on the back. This one I messed up on. I hide the brad in the other ones to where we have writing space. Um, but again, they spin. Like, how fun is that? So, let's move these out of the way and let's make some. So to start off, you're going to need um, squares that are, sorry, I wanted to grab my ruler just to double check this. You need squares that are three and three fourths by three and three fourths, right, because that's a square. And then you need, you need two of those, and you need eight that are one and three fourths by one and three fourths, right? Okay, so eight of the one and three fourths two of the three and three-fourths to make one pinwheel. Okay, and then we're gonna, we're gonna take our two squares and we're gonna line them up like this. And I like to take my ruler and kind of measure because I know that I should have three-fourths of an inch triangle on each side. here. I'm not being able to see what it is that I'm doing. Sorry. It's too far away from me. The reason why I'm a bit picky about this is because I want it to line up properly even whenever I spin it. So that's pretty close. I think that's pretty close. Yep. Okay, so we're gonna take our liquid glue, whatever that is for you. For me, it's art glitter glue. And I'm gonna put just a little bit right here. And I'm just doing that to help hold everything in place while I do the next steps. You don't wanna glue the whole thing down. Otherwise, we won't be able to get our brad in it properly later. Okay, so I've got many different um, squares. This one's cardstock. Some uh, colored cardstock. This one is actually um, cardstock that I glued coffee filter to. I coffee dyed this a long time ago and it had tore whenever I done it. And so I've just been hanging on to it um, to, till I figured out what I was going to do with it. And I found gluing it to like cardstock was quite um, a pretty option. So I'm just gonna put some glue on that corner. And then I'm gonna take this one, and we want a bit of space. You wanna see the um, larger squares kinda behind it. You just want a little bit of space there. And then um, I tore down a box the other day, and so the inside of the box, the inside lining of it is what I have here. And I like the lines to show so again, I'm gonna put just a little bit of glue on this corner. And try to position that to where I can still see a little bit of the back piece. And then I've got some, um, it's cardstock with uh, ledger paper. 
put that in this corner. And I try to just keep everything held down with my left hand as I move around so that it all ends up being positioned properly. I've made many that whenever you spin them, they don't line up properly, which is okay. But I'd, I'd prefer them to line up properly, which is my preference. And this is a coffee dyed note card that I've had for a while. I decided I'd use some of it. And you can do all of the same paper, you can do different papers. Just um, if you have a lot of scraps left over, you know, go dig through those and see what you can find, what you can come up with. Um, again, this is more the box that I had tore down the next piece that I'm fixing to grab here. And this is the inside, the corrugated part of it. And so I want to use some of that. And I just kind of press in the creases to get it stuck down. Okay. And then I got some tea dye paper with cards backed with cardstock. And on the little ripples here is where I'm gonna put my glue for this one. And you don't want to press down on this because you don't want to squish your um cardboard, your corrugated cardboard. So just kind of be very careful with that one. And as long as you blind them up properly, you should have to have a decent amount of space between these two to be able to put the very last piece, which for me is going to be a bit of a time card. And I'm not going to put glue first, I'm actually going to position this first. And you want to go underneath this one and over this one. So... Oops, it all kind of shifted on me. Let me try to get that back in line where it's supposed to be. This is the tricky part about it. I'm going to show you one that doesn't spin in a minute. So it's going to be more like what I was seeing kind of everybody else doing um, on the uh, Facebook page. So just put a little bit of glue underneath this one. <laughs> okay, and then I'm gonna lift this piece up and put glue underneath it. Thing I like about art glitter glue is the um, the tip of it being so small to be able to get in those small places. Okay. So I'm going to try to, once again, make sure to get that all lined back up. And I'm going to go find my awl now. Oh, I did grab it. Okay. Oops. I was like, oh no, I don't see it anywhere. But it's right beside me. Okay. So I'm going to find kind of where center is. And I'm going to make a mark. I'm not going to punch through. I'm just going to make a mark for where center kind of is. So that whenever I lift this up, and you probably can't see it on camera, but I can tell where it's at. I'm going to put my hand in between these um, layers. I only want to punch through the top layer. Don't punch through your fingers. Be very careful about this. And I'm going to go again between the layers. Not not through both layers, just, just the top one. And then I'm going to position this back where I want it. And I must not be positioning it the same way I had it because it's not going to line up properly. Again, the tricky part to it. <laughs> Lining it up. It just, it's fine. It doesn't have to be perfect. But, you know, I just, I want it to be a certain way. And it's just not working. So here you can see my pickiness of, you know, Wanting it to line up the way I want it, because I know it. I know it did five seconds ago. Okay, but anyways, 
Um, I'm gonna take my brad, and I found these laces that I wanted to, these scrap pieces, the laces that I had, that I wanted to use, so I'm gonna put um, my brad through these laces first. And then I'm going to take, I'm going to put my hand through, through the layers so that I don't accidentally puncture through the back. Okay, once you've done that, you need to fold the brads, which is hard to show you, but fold the brads um, pieces out. Press it down like so. I don't need to put that on because I'm fixing to use it again. Okay. Just trying to manipulate it here to kind of get it to be positioned mostly properly. Anyways. And then I'm going to take a bit of glue, like right in here, the opposite direction of where we put it in the first place, just to kind of hold everything together. So I want to show you this though before and we move on. While I made it just for a journaling card, my dad, whenever he's seen it, he thought, you know, you could tuck things in it and you really could. You've got several layers here that you could tuck something. So that's another option and for it. I just wanted to share that real quick. So here we have our um, pinwheel that spins. So that's, to me that's quite fun. It's a fun piece. Now I want to show you the one that doesn't spin. So let me grab my pieces. So I'm just going to kind of, I'll try to eyeball this one. And um, since it's not going to spin, once you've glued everything down, I mean it's, it's not going to go anywhere. So if it's not perfectly even, nobody's going to know. So I'm going to put some glue there like I did with the first one. And I'm going to come down and put some glue here. Like I did, we just did at the end of that other one. Because again, this one's not going to spin. So with this one, you can put glue all over the back of your pieces. We're just going to lay them down like we did with the first one. I need that side this to still be lifted up. Don't forget not to put too much glue there because you need to tuck something underneath the first one. Okay, put this piece down here. And this one will just be a journaling card. I mean, it won't be a tuck spot. It won't be, you know, anything else. This is some brown paper bag that I have here. And another thing you could do, I didn't do it, um, I meant to, but you can um, take and glue several layers of book page together and then um, put them between some books for about 24 hours to let them dry. And then um, you could cut your squares out of that if you don't have any cardstock. But if you don't have much book page and you do have cardstock, then use this you use the cardstock. But just keep gluing your pieces down, and this is more of a decorative journal card than it is anything. And I don't know, maybe other people have already brought the pinwheels to the junk journal world. And this is a repeat for you, I'm sorry if it is, but I haven't seen it done. And I like every piece in my journal to be as different as it possibly can. Um, so whenever I see a new idea like this, I'm just like, let me put that in my journal too. <laughs> I don't know about everybody else, but um, having the same thing, journaling card tag, journaling card tag, journaling card tag, you know, it just, it gets old kind of quite fast. 
you want something different, something new, some different things in there. So I thought this was neat and would be neat in our journals. <laughs> I glued that one down too much. Don't make the same mistake that I did. Okay, I'm just going to peel it up. Then I'll glue this one back down. Like so. And then for a decoration, I typically see people using buttons, which I think is really pretty and cute. And so I'm going to use the same thing. Maybe. Maybe I get it glued down. Prefer fabric tech for buttons. I've never tried gluing a button down with heart glitter glue. I'm fixing to find out whether or not it holds. <laughs> So there's that one. How much time do we have? You know, like 16 minutes in. I think I'll call this a video. Um, so I'll show you the ones that we did. We did this one that spins with all the pretty lace and the pretty brad on it. Let me get it closer to the camera. So there's that one. And then we have this one. And that's just a journaling card. It does not spin. And it's got the button on it. Again, we got all this writing space on the back. And it does fit, let me grab a pocket. They will kind of tuck into a pocket. They won't, you know, submerge all the way down in it. That's as far as you'll get it. You'll get those three, you know, um, pieces in it. But you won't get the whole thing because it's, it's the size of a pocket the, from corner to corner. In the middle of it um but it will tuck fine just fine in a um belly band so that's probably where where i will put mine but i may put them in a pocket like i said like so we'll see so thanks so much for watching everybody i hope you enjoyed this video and i hope you um, have a play with this idea again it wasn't mine um i took it from the uh card making community <laughs> so um it was totally Somebody, I, somebody's idea over there. Um, I think, again, thank you so much for watching. I hope you join. I hope you join me in my next video. Bye, guys.